Greetings, beautiful souls. Welcome to 5D Life, where you are living and thriving with the love of your soul in your heart and happiness in your mind. Because happy mind creates happy, loving reality that will assist you to thrive. So today we will wonder about what Shakespeare has to do with the soul healing. For those who know me, you know that I teach soul healing modality. I write the books. I'm using this um, particular aspect in my everyday work, and I'm very passionate about it. Um, for those who see me for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. So the other day I was walking in the gardens and this kind of, to me, a funny talk across my mind. What would happen if somebody rewrites Romeo and Juliet from the tragedy in the most amazing love story that we have ever heard on earth? And I was thinking, wow, that would be really interesting, right? And as a writer, I like to ponder about those things. And then I was right away thinking about those Hallmark movies, the romance love story, like how many did I have seen of them? Uh, if you're like me, quiet a lot. And there's a beautiful meeting of the two characters and falling in love and then fighting the obstacle, why they could not and should not be together. And then overcoming that love within themselves brings them so much closer and they kiss sometime under the mistletoe <laughs> and get married and live happily ever after. Now, guilty me, I don't even remember the titles of these names. I remember the stories, but it's hard to keep up with all the titles. It's kind of like go in and out and you are such nourished by the story and then you want more. You want more love. You want more love stories because that is what our soul is crying for. It wants to be love. It wants to share love. It wants to experience love. And while living in a human body, we are often very deprived of love and the love here transforms into three-dimensional energy with the wants and the needs and controls and you go like, oh, sometimes it may be a little too much. So our soul enter this universe from way beyond. In the Gnostics, they call it the feminine energy, Sophia. And the soul carries the love, knowledge, and wisdom from the God source, from part of the Creator beyond this universe. And there is something within you, within your soul, that is hungry for that love, that search for that love, that want to be connected through that love. So we are looking for that love and very often we, often we just um, are met with a lot of obstacles. Now, the Shakespeare have written Romeo and Juliet, something that is famous uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds years after, right? We all connect to the tragedy of the Romeo and Juliet. How many times this place has been played over and over and over with such a passion, passion of the two people who fell in love, the tragedy that they cannot be together. And we all remember to Romeo and Juliet. It is one and only because it speaks to something inside of us, something that is just deeply triggered by being in love and experiencing such tragedy and suffering. That's a typical starseed story that we are experiencing here on earth. We are rejected, we feel abandoned, we feel alone, we feel unsupported, we can't be with the people that we love. Now forget about the soulmate relationship at this moment. You can't be with your soul family because whatever happened. And so you can sympathize and you can feel it. And, and in a way, it gives you a comfort. It stirs the passion with you. And it makes you also really sad. That's our life on earth. Now, interestingly enough, after my big pondering and, um, you know, kind of, 
entertainment of myself to thinking how it would be to remake the Romeo and Juliet in the most amazing happy ending story. The day after I walk into the Christian Science bookstore, it was just this one of the very random thing when a friend of mine went um, for a walk in the downtown and we just walk into the store. We each walk into the different kind of the bookshelves and we each found the same book. Science and Health with Keep the Scriptures by Mary Baker Eddy. Now, this is a very known material that I have personally seen for the first time. Uh, but it's a fabulous material and one of the pages that I opened that I spoke about that we have to heal our mind to have a healthy body and have a healthy soul. So um, yesterday I was listening a little bit on the audio tapes and Vitari speaks about um, teaching that we know from the Neville Goddard, Florence Shin, Rudolf Steiner, all the teaching that focus let's control your mental mind and this universe is mental that goes back to the hermetic teachings and how we can apply it from the scriptures to our life now what it has to do with the soul healing everything and perhaps nothing so what really surprised me is that when i opened the book and on that Literary first page is not even marked yet. There are three quotes. And the second one of them is from Shakespeare. I was thinking, huh, I was just thinking about the Shakespeare the day before. So it says, there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Shakespeare. That is profound once understood on that deep inner level, it is so profound that you may need to sit down to listen to this one. In the soul healing, you are learning about the harmony and disharmony of your soul and ego that needs to grow into the mind within the body. And when this with our three energies, soul, ego, mind, and the body, become uh, overactive or underactive uh, controlling it put out of balance the other two energies and very often we have to start with that ego consciousness that is a lower energy of the mind consciousness to heal it so it will allow the soul to participate in the healing so going back to the quote, I just want to make sure that I say it exactly right. There is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. So we do have our suggested thinking, right? The ways how we grew up, what kind of the movies and plays we see, all the environment around us. So naturally, the Romeo and Juliet is such a tragedy. At least I would think about it as a tragedy. Very sad kind of the love story. But that's the way how I think about it. When I think about it, I already connecting to that sadness and it's really hard to find a true soulmate on earth and loving it all, thinking we'll always end into the doomsday or something really bad, something always going to go wrong because that's what is suggested or that's how my mind can perceive it. A three-dimensional mind, which is the ego consciousness mind, is pre-programmed by the fear and the suffering that helps us to survive. So here we have a, a beautiful love story of the fear of the suffering, of the hope and desires and wishing. Yet it ends the way how it ended. Now imagine this. What if I rewrite this story? What if I, there are several kind of devices that I play in my head. It may end up that she drinks the water instead of poison, fakes her dad, he fakes his dad, and they loop and live happily ever after. Or that they realize that this three-dimensional embodiment 
is just a part of the journey. But if they die together and connect together, they will walk in the most fabulous afterlife that is actually much better than the life we're having here. That they literally wake up from the nightmare into the life of their dreams. Is it true? We do not know. But if I think about it, I can make it true. Not for anyone of you, but for myself. If I convince myself to believe that, either the, my first version, that they just, you know, fake their dead and move somewhere in the other part, of, other part of the world and live happily ever after, or that the afterlife is actually better than the earthly life, it will completely eliminate my lower mind, which is the ego. Suddenly, there's a happiness. Ego is always impatient and unhappy. Mind is patient and happy. Two just basic distinguishments here. So if I convince my mind to be happy, you know, sort of ego says like, hey, I have written the story and I will think of it as the most beautiful, amazing story for myself. I don't have to convince the whole world that the Romeo and the Juliet walk out of their body, wait for each other, hold their hand and walk into the most amazing life that we can't only dream about. Something magical will happen. And this is the soul healing. When I will heal my mind from the, this tragical way of the thinking, into a positive thinking, it will open a pathway for the soul to bring her love, her knowledge, her wisdom from all the lives you ever had. And suddenly, there's this beautiful harmony of a soul-mind consciousness, which Pleiadians call the twin flame of the energy, and that will co-create healthy body, and anything which you would you like from the physical body creation. So, looking at it in a different angle, your soul healing is literally your soul brings this energy, these beautiful emotions, and this feeling, let's say, of love. Think of it as a beautiful flow through the blood in your veins. It's bringing this love, this desire, this hope, even the wants and needs of physical desires, passion, because she knows that the love is the most amazing, important energy within this universe that is going to make you incredible things. It will help you to move the mountains. And when that happens, it goes like a blood through the vein, and then the ego sends this. Like, oh my God, too much of love, too much of happiness, too much of stuff. Uh, my job is to control everything and be afraid and suffer because fear will help us to keep alive and we survive. For God's sake, we have to survive. It's going to close that pathway. It literally create the, what we call the blockages, obstacles. Or physically, you can imagine it will create a... Um, the obstacle within the vein where the blood cannot flow and you have to go to the doctor and you have to go to cardiologist and you have to have a, that surgery when they put the balloon in your, in your vein and open it so they can put the stand and the stand helps the collapsed vein so the blood can go through. That is a soul healing when that beautiful loving energy is here and it says, okay, ego, you are the scared little animal. And I know I'm carrying this beautiful star seed energy, extra terrestrial energy because you are a star seed, or the energy from the God source, which we all have from beyond this universe because we all have a soul within the body. Would you work with me? Would you become my friend? Can we do this together? Can we choose how we're going to think about everything? Once you win your ego on your side, you start growing it into a mind who will open these pathways and the soul can bring 
the love and knowledge and the wisdom from your past lives. And suddenly you will sit there and you will understand these things. And there's something fabulous that's going to happen to you. You will be able to perceive these messages as I was sharing with you. It is the soul's guidance that guides the thinking process. But in a way, in a thinking, you are a little bit on the back seat, but yet you are very active in creating and thinking after you perceive messages. So as I was walking in the gardens and suddenly I this idea popped in my head about Romeo and Juliet and how it would sound to um, be rewritten in a positive way. I have never honestly heard this quote from the Shakespeare. Of course, there are the many quotes that we are sharing, but I have never heard this one. There is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes, makes it so. So what if William Shakespeare have written all of this in the messages for us? I present you a greatest tragedy that stirs you so much inside that you can't help yourself but listen to this tragedy over and over and over. It's not what we do. And then one day when you are full of this tragedy, you will see the truth because fifth dimensional energy is the capability to see the truth and to be the truth. But it's up to you how you're going to think about it. It's up to you how you're going to perceive it. I'll present it to you. But it's up to you what you're going to do with it. Are you going to join to the tragedy team or are you going to join the thriving team? Three dimension, five dimension. Way of the thinking. Your way of the thinking will heal the pathway for your soul. And that is soul healing. You can spend hours and hours and hours sending the energy to the soul and she will reflect it back with the love, love, love. But your body is going to block it. It's going to create these shocking things, the chaos, the blockages, the um, manifest, all kind of the weirdness. I read for so many people every day. It is up there where that ego mind consciousness, the ego consciousness really holds it. So in the soul healing classes, we learn to literally understand them separately and then make them work together. We talk about actually a lot of logical things about, you know, the ascension process and about how to assess the past lives and the galactic lives and, uh, you know, how to create a healing routine and how to work with the colors, just the three basic colors, the red, the green and blue. I personally think it's really fun. And it's beautiful to gain to knowledge, to be the captain of your boat. But again, even the captain of the boat has to follow the law of nature, how the wind falls, how the water moves. And according to that, the captain will adjust his or her boat um, depending on the water conditions. So the same is with us. We become in the charge of our life. But there are sometimes these conditions that are connected to the nature of our life that follow the law of the nature. And that way we need to learn to, to, to pay attention to the signs and the symbolism on our journey. And we just take it one day at a time and we're going to grow in this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful life. So... I believe in the trees, that the good things happen in the trees. So my first sign was in the garden when I had this idea pop in my head. It definitely wasn't a coincidence because everything happens for a reason. Second, I found a marvelous book that I cannot wait when I have a little bit more time to read it all and learn from it. It's truly fabulous. And I love the work from late 1800, 1900, because there is so much of the truth in it. Uh, then I found a quote. <laughs> There's nothing good or bad. It is your choice what you're going to think. So that was my second sign. And a third one was today when I'm running on a very short schedule. <laughs> and I just had that inner passion and desire to share this with you. So I followed that. 
that is the guidance of my soul that is the soul healing that is happening right now to be in the present to be in the body to be embodying my higher self and sharing it with you through this earthly body i have in this lifetime so you can do the same we came here to change to heal to evolve not only ourselves but the whole world if it would like to have our assistance but everything starts with us the thinking process starts with us it starts with you so from today on let's just really think about the romeo and juliet what is it that you want to have in your life how you would like to uh, end this story so if you would like to please share with me um, in the comments i'm curious what you think about it and we're gonna thanks to william shakespeare you are the genius and thanks to all of you i love you and i wish you the best on this journey and i see you next time or i see you in my class the link to enroll is below thank you thank you thank you love and light from my heart to yours